When you start doing astrophotography, you will likely get like all of the main pure astrophotography equipment like I have here, I have my mount to uh, go to and track my targets. I have my telescope to gather photons to reach my camera that's sitting at the front of my telescope hidden behind this uh, dew shield here. I have my guide set up, you can see the guide camera here, uh, and I have all of these accessories, including like an autofocuser here at the back to kind of uh, drive me through my astrophotography session, including a control center here, which for me is a Windows mini PC uh, that runs on 12 volts, like the rest of the equipment. And for others, it can be something like the uh, ZW ASI Air as a control center, which will also do the th same thing. But what about everything else? What else do you need for astrophotography that is peripheral to the main imaging equipment? And so in this video, I want to go through the peripherals, those accessories, whether I was able to buy them for astro from astrophotography shops or I bought them like on Amazon or at hardware stores, I just want to quickly go through some tools that could be very uh, useful for you in the hobby and that some of them I really hope I had known about uh, before I really started <laughs> because it would have saved me a lot of trouble. The first accessory that I want to present and it's absolutely not a mandatory accessory slash peripheral, but it has saved me countless hours of frustration. It is a flat field generator, also known as a flat panel. And this uh, particular flat field generator is made for astrophotography. It is effectively a uniform white light that you can put on the objective of your telescope to capture what we call flat frames, which are a critical part type of calibration frames that will help you remove uh, shadows from dust motes or optical imperfections from your image. And it doesn't sound like it would be mandatory to do flat frames, but it absolutely is. It makes a huge, huge difference. And there are many techniques to take flat frames from uh, putting a, t a white t-shirt stretched over your objective lens and then uh, pointing that at like a nice uniform sky or at a white wall, that kind of stuff. I've used the t those techniques a lot in the past, but sometimes it just doesn't cut it compared to the repeatability that you can get with uh, white uh, field generator which uh, works for this one out of a 12 volt battery. Now I will put for all of the items including this one uh, links down in the description if you're interested. Note that this is the expensive variety because it is made for astrophotography and it has like um, a knob to really adjust the uh, the light that that makes it uh, through the flat field generator which is very useful when you want to target a specific exposure length for your flats uh, across various filters because some filters might block more lights than other but of course there are alternatives you can simply use like a, a tablet uh, if the objective lens that you have is small enough maybe combined with some diffusing paper so that the tablet pixels don't affect your flat frames because they should really be uniform. But if you do your flat frames at roughly the same focus point as your light frames when you image your targets at night, then your, your pixels from the tablet should be completely out of focus. You also have uh, drawing boards or LED boxes or LED drawing pads or LED lining tools for drawing that are effectively the same thing. They typically offer different levels of brightness if not as, uh, as detailed and as precise as my flat panel. And those, the only issue that they may have is that they kind of flicker at a very uh, high frequency. So you want to make sure that your flat frames are long enough to get rid of that flicker, to basically uniform the flicker across. And any flat frame that is above one second long, which it, your flat frames in general should be, or at least that's what I am aim for, would be fine. This honestly is a life-changing peripheral for me. It really removes the guesswork out of taking flat frames, especially if you combine it with a tool like the Flat Wizard in the free and open source capture software called Nina, which I have installed on my little uh, mini PC here. Talking about this mini PC here, because I get asked a lot about what it is. I did make a video about this mini PC around a year ago, so I'll put a link like above here or and down in the description. Uh, it is a Melee Quieter 2 mini PC. Currently, I think the latest version is the Quieter 3 with a slightly faster CPU. And 
Uh, the big advantage of this mini PC is that it can run over 12 volt DC, which the rest of the equipment works on. So that's uh, super useful. Other adapters that you will get is spacers. Spacers, th these are T-thread spacers. Uh, this one that I'm unscrewing is actually 15 millimeters. I have another one here that's like 10 millimeters. Uh, I think there's another one in here that's seven millimeters and you may end up with tons of those spacers with different lengths and this is because of something called back focus. On many telescopes, not all, but many telescopes back focus the distance between the uh, rear and most uh, lens in your telescope, typically a focal flattener, uh, a focal reducer or field flattener and your camera sensor is critical. It's very often supposed to be 55 millimeters and that distance will change slightly depending on whether you have a filter in the way or not and so you need to be able to adjust that distance like roughly first with such adapters here and then really precisely and that will be the next accessory but you will end up with a lot of those adapters very likely at least I did that you screw together unscrew together to adjust the distance between your telescope and the camera sensor and together with that you can even buy spacer rings and uh, this one is 0.5 millimeters thick. Uh, that one is 0.8 millimeters thick. And uh, this one also 0.8 millimeters thick. And I have many of those actually. I have uh, a, a lot of others, other ones. And this is really a, allows you to do precise spacing adjustments between your camera sensor and your focal reducer, field flattener, whatever the rearmost element in your telescope is. Uh, the way that it works is that you simply take uh, two spacers like I have here. You can simply insert the ring above the threads and then screw the second spacer here. And just like that, you've added those 0. something millimeters to the light path, to the, the length of the path that the light will travel to go from the telescope to your camera sensor. When you're doing that, you're making the adapter screw less into the threads and depending on the uh, thread pitch, I think for this one it's 0.75 millimeters. If you have like a 0.5 millimeter adapter, it means that you will also rotate the camera by inserting the spacer. So very often people will have like a separate rotator to make sure that their uh, camera is rotated in the best way or we have other adapters to take care of this. So I have those other adapters, those are flexible here and they're they're used in the same way, except that their only purpose is not really to add light pass, but to slightly change the angle of the camera uh, so that you can also without a rotator kind of manage that. So whole science, it can be very annoying and having a rotator overall is just far, far easier. Even just rotating the whole focuser assembly, if you have a refracting telescope, can make a big difference. And while we're talking about adjusting things like distance from the optics to the camera sensor, there's also the how square the camera sensor is to your optics. If the camera sensor is tilted compared to the optics, this will be closer to the, to the optics. This will be further away from the optics. For that, another accessory. These days, this is an old one and uh, there are far better accessories available now. And also, it's very often integrated in the imaging cameras at the front of the imaging cameras but it is a tilt adapter where I can use this, these uh, push-pull screws here on, on three spots on the adapter to adjust the angle of my uh, camera uh, sensor compared to the optics to have better squaring. Obviously this adds distance to the light path uh, so the ones that are integrated into the cameras don't do that and it, they can be very convenient. Okay, now I'm going to go towards more general purpose, non-astrophotography accessories, because one of the things that we do when we have several threads that we uh, put into one another is that we could have those th threads binding, like you're not able to remove it with uh, normal strength. If you can see here, I actually have scratches on this particular adapter because I wasn't able to remove it. It had completely binded and I had no idea what to do so at the time I just used like pliers effectively to remove it which was of course a terrible idea. There are far better tools to do that. My first line of dealing with adapters binding together is uh, grip gloves like those from, uh, from 3M. 
Um, and they really provide a lot of grip. They really allow you to unthread those adapters. They can also allow you to thread them very tightly, which you may want to avoid from time to time, but that is super useful for me. It has come to my help and to my rescue many, many, many times. Another thing that I cannot do without is well, the support from my Patreon and channel members and from all of my subscribers and viewers. Thank you so much because you guys make the channel possible. If you like this video up to now and you're waiting to see what other peripherals I'm gonna show, you may want to take some time to like the video, subscribe to the channel, in which case, welcome. Leave a comment down below of what, about what your favorite accessories and peripherals for astrophotography are. And if you're feeling very generous, you can also join my Patreon, join the channel. It really makes a huge difference and thank you so so much to all of my supporters viewers and subscribers thank you anyway my real next accessory is for things when binding those adapters has re have really bound together such that even my grip gloves cannot do anything about it it's rubber strap wrenches rubber strap wrenches are basically just like a strap that you can wind around one of the uh, adapters for example i can simply wind it here i can actually adjust the length of the rubber strap to really tighten it around my adapter and then i can move and unthread the adapter as needed i have two of those so i can grip the two uh, spacers, for instance, that are causing me trouble and that are, that are bound together. Uh, you have those are have uh, fairly thick straps. Um, there are uh, some with much thinner straps that can make it easier to really deal with uh, smaller adapters that have binded it. Those are also lifesavers. I, I had absolutely no idea those existed when I first started, and I really, really wish I had known. Now we've talked a bit about distances, especially the distance between the optics and the sensor. And it's very important to actually be able to double check those distances. And this is why just for astrophotography originally, even though I use it for other purposes since, I bought a digital caliper like I have here where I can simply measure distances very easily uh, like this. I can measure the inside of surfaces. I can measure the outside of surfaces. And using this at the end, I can also measure the depth of uh, threads, adapters, that kind of stuff. It is an absolute lifesaver. Now let's talk a bit about power delivery. As, well, as I mentioned several times in this video, most of this equipment, actually all of the equipment that I have here from my focuser to my mount to my PC, to the cooling system on the uh, main astrophotography camera, they run on 12 volts. So obviously you need 12 volt power. How do I do to provide power to all of my equipment? Well, because I image from my rooftop balcony most of the time, I have, I have access to power outlets. And so I use power adapters such as this one, which is, which is 12 volt, six amps. And that provides ample power to really power everything at once without any issues. Now, of course, because I need to power everything at once, I need a way to split the outputs of that, uh, of the 12 volt, six amps to each of the devices that I have connected. Uh, for that, I will be using uh, splitters, DC splitters like this one. I'm told this is bad practice. I don't know anything about electricity, <laughs> uh, so I don't know, uh, but it works really well for me and that's what I've been using for ages. Many people, instead of using DC splitters, they will buy accessories such as Pegasus uh, control or power box, I don't remember the exact name, uh, that lets you control the ports, turn them on and off one by one, monitor the power consumption of each. The ASI Air also has these capabilities with a power hub where you can control everything at once. It's awesome, I make do with this. <laughs> Also, why, when I am going on the field, I need robust batteries uh, that will output 12 volts. So this one will also output 12 volts, whether via a cigar plug or a 12 volt kind of normal DC plug. Um, this battery is what, 72,000 milliamp hours or 266 watt hours. So it will last uh, quite a few hours with the whole equipment, uh, cooling the camera, controlling the mount. Um, uh, running the focuser all of, and also the computer as well. It will run fairly easily for five or six hours without problems. Uh, the issues start to come when I use something like a dew shield. I'll get to that in a moment. But for a dew shield, I actually have another, a secondary 
battery just for my uh, for my dew shield because it does consume a lot of power just like the camera so i have two batteries that way i can always work around power issues and make things uh, work as necessary if you use a single battery for the whole equipment sometimes the mount will complain it doesn't get any en enough power and it's like it kind of still works but it's something to be careful of i've also seen situations where not having enough power to the mount can cause poor guiding so yeah your results may vary and this is one of the things that when I'm on the field I can struggle with so a really high quality battery like Jackery batteries or uh, something like there's a power uh, bank that is provided by Celestron as well again I'll put links down in the description uh, but those might be better ideas than those simple batteries that I got off of uh, Amazon I also put links to some random 12 volt high capacity batteries on Amazon uh, but you never know when you buy on Amazon whether the actual ca capacity of the, the battery is the advertised one so yeah be careful now one of the other accessory that I've mentioned several times already is a dew heater and actually dew prevention uh, kind of accessories. And this is because when you use your optics at night, the uh, glass of, the, of your optics, especially if it's pointed up upwards like it usually is when we're doing astrophotography, it will cool down faster than uh, the surrounding air and therefore it will, uh, the surface of your optics might get cold enough or the uh, humidity in the air to condense on your optics do and that it, that really puts an end to the session when that happens so you want to really prevent that there are multiple ways you can do so one is a dew shield like I have on my telescope here it basically extends the telescope the glass part the optics part is actually at this level here and I extend the telescope and that will help uh, lengthen the amount of time that it will take for the dew to form on the objective lens but it's not enough and most refractors come with an integrated dew shield which is really good but it is not enough and that's where we have dew heaters which are bands that you can that can uh, get heated up and you can really wrap around your optics and here I have it wrapped around the, the optic, especially the, the front character plate here. And it will be connected to uh, 12 volts. And as it, as it gets connected to 12 volt, it will just heat up. Now you can control very precisely how much power you attribute to the dew band. There are specific controllers in those like Pegasus power boxes, that kind of stuff. My own dew band actually has um, a temperature sensor and a temperature setting um, that is automated, directly integrated in it. So I don't need any specific way to control it separately. It's super convenient. And that's what I use all the time. And I typically plug it in either directly uh, here with my spare 12 volt uh, plug, or I use like my separate battery just for the uh, dew band. If you're using lenses for astrophotography or small refractors, you can also buy cheap 5 volt dew bands. This, this big one is 12 volts, this is 5 volts, and it will get power over USB, which can be enough for smaller lenses. And that's like also standard Amazon Fair available for normal na nature photographers as well. How do I put all of this equipment on top, especially how do I put my mini PC on top? How do I mount it on the, the telescope? If you have something like an ASI Air, there are screws that you can use to mount it. It can be very convenient. Sometimes it's difficult even with things like the ASI Air. And for me, I just use like straps like this one, Velcro straps. Uh, you, I've used also like uh, zip ties in the past, including massive zip ties in the past, like uh, like this one. Uh, but the Velcro straps simply work the best for me. And once you have everything also on the telescope, you really want to do cable management. Cable management is really keeping loose cables to a minimum because loose cables, they, they can grab on parts of the mount. Uh, but many cables don't need to be loose. They can be taut so that they don't uh, grab anything on the equipment as your mount slews around the sky while you're imaging. Or there's another reason as well is if you have cables that are dangling, the wind can really grab them, make them uh, sway like this. And this will also affect your tracking and the guiding of your equipment, which is really bad for astrophotography. So that's why I highly recommend good cable management. What I'm using here at the top is actually uh, 3D printed. It is made by one of my subscribers, uh, Nick. 
And those particular adapters, you can use it for any cables, but they're actually rounded here at the base, so you can put them on a telescope very easily. And uh, they have a hole in the center for a zip tie. So I can actually insert a zip tie in there and then like tighten it around something. And then, as you can see, just push the cable th cables through. It's super nice. He also makes models that will be basically around an ASI Air or around ZW cameras, which is super cool when you have the camera. As an example, I put one temporarily on the front camera. I cannot use it full time because my camera is in front of my optics, but for most people, it would be here at the back and using those cable management tools with the ZW cameras. He sells those on his Etsy shop. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, he's also allowed me to 3D print those locally and sell them locally. In Japan so if you're in Japan and you want to get those cable management tools let me know I can print and sell locally as well but I cannot stress enough how convenient those cable management tools are they really make the whole equipment very sleek very tight and there's really as few cables dangling around as humanly possible the only ones that are actually dangle dangling are because they, they need to have some slack because of the positions that the telescope could have relative to the mount as it's loose to multiple targets. But that really makes a huge, huge difference also in terms of wind resistance of the, the whole equipment. So highly, highly recommended. And finally, a last peripheral that I want to mention is a powerful PC. This is a laptop that was supposed to be a gaming PC. I use it for processing, especially with the latest tools that are AI based like Starnet++ or the RC Astro tools that are miracles in and of, of themselves. We can use GPU or graphics card acceleration for at least NVIDIA GPUs and this PC has an NVIDIA GPU. I also have a desktop PC with an NVIDIA GPU. This is where I do my processing of images. A PC with lots of RAM. I, at least I would say 32 gigs of RAM would be preferable with an NVIDIA graphical processing unit or graphics card with a powerful multi-threaded CPU makes a huge, huge difference. And of course, if you're a Mac user, uh, the uh, Mac M1s, M2s are apparently really, really good at these kinds of uh, workload. So that's really important. And I use this PC, like I save hours and hours of processing time by having a powerful PC because there is nothing more soul killing to be uh, trying a process out in Cyril or in PixInsight. The process takes five minutes to run, even on a preview. And each time you run it, you don't like the results and you have to repeat over and over again. It is soul crushing having a powerful PC fixes that. And of course, together with the PC, you want to have good processing software. Of course, you can have Photoshop, Cyril, AstroPixel processor, uh, Star Tools, etc. I personally use PixInsight because when combined with RC Astro tools, especially Blur Exterminator, they can really bring your uh, images to the next level. And that's the other final, real final accessory that I would mention, which is the software part. And for me, it's PixInsight with RC Astro. And no, I am not sponsored by either of those people. And with that, that's the end of my list for now. Please let me know down in the comments what you use so we can have a look at what else I'm missing out on or others are missing out on. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. You really make the channel possible. But also, all of my viewers, all of my subscribers, really thank you so much. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.